So for um, number 21, they want us to take the sequence here, a n is equal to um, 1 plus, so that's 1 plus uh, minus 1 half to the power of n, and they want us to um, calculate to four decimal places the first 10 terms. So I've gone ahead and I've put in the first 10 terms um, because a1 is going to be 1 plus minus 1 half to the power of 1, so that's 1 minus 1 half. a2 is going to be 1 plus minus 1 half to the power of 2, so that is uh, plus 1 fourth. a3 is going to be 1 minus 1 half to the power of 3, so minus 1 eighth, and so on, until a10, which is 1 plus um, negative 1 half to the power of 10. Um, and so I've gone ahead and I've plotted, I've put in these values here, and now it wants us to, um, to plot these. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Um, so on my independent axis, that's going to be my n. So I have n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And then on my dependent axis, I'm going to have a of n. So we're going to scale this a little bit differently. Um, actually, let me, oops, let me correct this. Okay, so that is going to be here. And each of these are, I'm going to scale it to 0 0.1. So that's 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1, um, let's see, and then we have 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 .1, and then 1.3. Okay, that's all we need. Um, well, this looks a bit shoddy, but we'll we'll get it done. So for a is equal to 1, we have 1 half. a is equal to 2, we have 1.25, so all the way up there. A is equal to 3, we have 0 0.87, so uh, here. From A is equal to 4, we have 1.0025, so very, very close to 1, maybe just a little bit above. A is equal to 5, we have 0 0.96, so um, about here. A is equal to 7, and we have, uh, I think I plotted this wrong, let's see. A is equal to 5.96. A, oh yeah, A is equal to 6, we have 1.01, .01, so um, here, A is equal to 7, we have 0 0.992, so touching this line here, um, 8, we have 1.0039, so here, 9, we have 0 0.998, so below, and then 10, we have 1.0010, so like so. Um, and we can clearly see here that these values, even though they oscillate from down to up, down to up, they're getting cl constantly closer and closer to this line here, right, which is the line 1. So we can see here graphically that the limit is 1 because as we add more terms, they get closer and closer to 1. Um, but now we have to prove it, right? So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to take the limit the limit of as n approaches infinity of 1 plus, and we're just going to separate this, minus 1. Um, actually, we won't separate it. So we're going to go um, minus 1 half to the power of n. All right, and then let's think about what happens here. Um, well, negative 1 half to the power of n as n goes to infinity is equal to um, negative one half times negative one half times negative one half and so on and so we can see that this is we're constantly having the amount that we have right in the absolute value so it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and this is actually going to um, it's going to tend to zero and the way that we can prove this is we can go okay that is equal to uh, minus 1 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n and minus 1 to the power of n This is just going to be the absolute value of 1 right because it's either going to be positive 1 or a negative 1 There's no other value and then 2 to the power of n as n goes to infinity Well, that is 2 the limit to to infinity, which is 1 divided by infinity, right? Which is 1 divided by infinity, which the limit is um, zero. So 
we're going to have here that this limit, so the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, 1 plus negative 1 half to the power of n is equal to 1 plus, this guy goes to 0, right? So 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. So we've gone ahead and we've proved that. Um, we had a guess, right, graphically, that it was going to be 1 half. And we have just shown here that the limit is, sorry, that it was going to be 1. And we have shown here that the limit is actually going to be 1. Um, and so that is it for number 21.